briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Previously, lower courts presiding over the cases made inconsistent decisions. In one case, the motion to dismiss was wrongly granted, while in the other two, it was unjustly denied. These inconsistencies led to the appeal at the Supreme Court. The case was further complicated by the BFOQ defense, a narrow exception to general prohibitions against age discrimination. This defense allows employers to justify discriminating based on age if it's crucial for business operations. However, the ADA urges employers to assess employees by their individual merits, not their age, placing a higher burden on state employers than the rational basis standard. The ADA broadened the boundaries of the Equal Protection Clause, prohibiting age discrimination in state employment decisions that the rational basis standard would have allowed. This extension of the act to the states happened in 1974, which the Supreme Court later deemed an excessive reaction to a minor issue. In their final ruling, the Supreme Court upheld the decision of the lower courts, concluding that the ADA overstepped Congress's reach under the 14th Amendment. However, it didn't authorize Congress to disregard states' 11th Amendment immunity. This reaffirms that age classifications are inherently rational, and the task of proving their unconstitutionality lies in the hands of the individual challenging them. The ADA, therefore, fell short in its attempt to prevent age discrimination in the employment practices of the states. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.